RBB Morning Show, the coach, mentor, marketing, and social media strategist you need each and every morning. RBB, a live morning talk show that gives you the ability to get the coach you need, strategist you wish you could afford, social media manager and strategist, marketing strategist, project manager, certified OBM, VA, business startup strategist, profit strategist, web strategist, email funnel strategist, sales page strategist, PR strategist, time management, mindset, and overall business development strategist. We answer it all. With over 25 years of business experience, both in corporate and small business worlds, we really can answer it all. Morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I did have to look at the day because I have no idea what day of the week it is. <laughs> I hope everybody is set up for success today and is ready to dive into the second day of October, second day of our fourth quarter. Uh, we are still talking about scaling your business. And today we're talking about how to set your business up to scale because there is a process to this. And it's actually it, the, like the process isn't hard it can be tedious but it's not hard yeah, um, it's the tedious most definitely <laughs> um and it can be a bit techy at times so this is this is one of those steps that you can hire somebody for um we have somebody that we hire to do some of these things we obviously because we both have a tech background do a lot of this stuff for ourselves but when we can we don't want to do it we hire somebody else for these things so it is this is one of the more difficult pieces for some people because it's a little bit techy. Yeah, and this is usually where people get stuck. Um, um, very much so. Yeah, they get stuck and they don't know what they're doing. So they get stuck here and then they do it all backwards and it's a mess. Yes. Uh, I don't know how many times both Gina and I have been in the uh, the trenches fixing this mess. <laughs> when somebody yeah, has set and, it up themselves. Yes. So, and they're resistant to the fix. Yes. So keep in mind that this is really necessary and important if you want, if you are trying to run a real business and not a hobby business um, and are really trying to grow to the next level, scale your business, people. Um, then wait, wait, let's go over it again. What is scaling? It is not increasing your pricing. It is getting yourself to the point that you aren't physically doing every single thing in your business. That is scaling your business. So in order to do that, you have to have processes, procedures, automations, and things set up. So that's what we're going to go through today. So some of the systems that you really, really need to have is a, an onboarding system. There this should be a big one and people don't do it. Like, I don't understand. This one drives me absolutely crazy. People just like they, they have no rhyme or reason to their onboarding process, or they think that onboarding should take a month to do. I don't get that one either. Like onboarding should take less than 48 hours. Yes. Um, that doesn't mean that you're going to start in less than 48 hours, but your onboarding process should take less than 48 hours. So a few weeks ago, we talked about that customer journey and how long it took to get through that process with your customer to have a happy customer. This is part of that customer journey is your onboarding process. So for us, when we onboard a client, the first thing they get, obviously, is their contract that includes their uh, auto pay credit card form. So yeah, we don't we can auto charge them. We don't invoice anymore. We have a policy. We're not going to chase you. Uh, so, like you, like it just you. We're rendering service, and we should be paid, and we should have to pay way for it. Yes. So we um we have an onboarding process. We invo we we send a contract. They sign said contract. We invoice them for their first month. Then they get forms to fill out. We have forms for everything that automatically go out because we have workflows in Dubsado. We um, also have a welcome packet that they get sent after they sign the contract that just goes, goes through over, everything. Goes, it goes over some main points, our boundaries, our office hours, like when we're available, you know, when they get, you know, like turnaround times. We send them all of that. Um, who they should email if they have issues. We send them essentially a flyer or a document that has all of this information in there for them so that so that they are oriented to working with us. They understand we're not open on weekends. Do not expect us to be at your beck and call. We're going to answer you in 24 to 48 hours for an email unless it's an absolute emergency. And what we deem an emergency and what you deem an emergency are two totally different things. 
Yeah, unless things are broken and your customers can't contact you, it's not an emergency. Just yep. saying. Um, so that is part of our onboarding process. And they fill out those forms. And then the next, last thing they get is a link to schedule their onboarding call with us. But we go over that, all of that with them. Which that is up to them when they schedule that. We have clients that will schedule it for the next day. I sent it out yesterday afternoon to a client and she was scheduling it immediately. She wanted to know if yesterday afternoon, if I had time to meet with her. It's like, I'm sorry. No, I don't. I had a full book day. So she scheduled immediately for today. Good morning, Brenda Lee. Good morning, Brenda Lee. So having that process automated is makes everything very, very simple. And Dips Auto, you can automate the entire thing where you don't have to think about it. Like it can just send boom, 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 boom. And honestly, those are just, those can be sent in just like a couple of emails. And and if you set yourself up a well done workflow in Dubsado, it makes it very very easy. Um, and I highly I highly suggest Dubsado, especially when you're starting. The price um, is free up to three clients. So when you're first starting, it's absolutely free. After three clients, you should be able to afford the twenty or thirty five dollars a month. Yeah, but um, if you can't do that, and you really don't have much to your onboarding process, it's literally just a contract and an invoice and everybody should have a welcome packet. I don't care what your service is. I don't care what you're doing. You've got to orient people to working with you. If you don't, your boundaries are, you're going to constantly be in a state of battling with boundaries. Absolutely. So you need to have those that way you can, people can't say they didn't know. So you have to send it to them. Um, so that can all honestly be done in one email. If that's all you have. Us, we have forms. We have multiple forms that you have to fill out so that we can get access to things that we need to get access to, understand what it is that you're needing and what you're looking for. We have several. So we have to use, we, it's, it made, it makes sense for us to use uh, software like Dubsado, but some people it might not. Yes. So Trello, Trello, Trello is amazing if you can't um, afford Dubsado. However, I will tell you, this is someplace to, uh, to really, really think about investing for your business. This streamlines your customer onboarding, your customer service, your delivery, everything about your business using something like Dubsado. And if you are by yourself and then are not, and are not scaling your business to not be doing stuff, do, using Trello is absolutely fine. The minute you're looking to scale and hire employees and have more to the onboarding and more people touching things and all of that, Dubsado will be a lifesaver. You have to have some way to onboard that everybody has access to, or at least your main admin team has access to, that people can check contracts and can check communications and everybody can see those things. And Dubsado it makes that super easy. Um, I definitely, this is where a lot of small businesses fail is they try to, the business owner tries to keep everything close to the chest and then they get sick, but their business still needs to run and they've got 20 people doing things underneath them, but nobody knows the process. Nobody even knows what your process is. Um, and, and that's a really yeah, big deal. They don't know where anything is. And then you're, then the business owner is yelling and screaming because nothing is getting done, but who can do anything? So like. You have to make that decision. If you're wanting to bring on team and scale and expand, then you have to let go of the reins a little bit. If you're going to continue to be a control freak, you're wasting everyone's time. Don't like, bother you, trying to hire people. Don't, don't bother. Don't bother. So then that then that brings on your customer service. A customer service, not necessarily a system, but more of like you need an FAQ. You need to have you know canned responses. You know like slim some things down in your customer service just a little bit like if you have a if you have an FAQ page then that is some that is something that you can include in an autoresponder so when somebody emails you you know they can the FAQ is received you know there there are ways to kind of keep putting this information in front of people and then also you know trying to ha trying to have a designated place where people where all of your communications are happening. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, people think people in the small business world think that they can just message you on your personal page on Facebook, which I, I think is unprofessional, but they continue to do it because Facebook makes people very accessible. 
And people want the instant gratification. They don't want to wait on an email. They want you to answer them in five minutes. So people think that a Facebook message is essentially the same as a text message. So have a have a way of gently dealing with that because things get buried in Messenger. So you have to you need to keep up with your customer service inquiries. So as part of our um, autoresponder in our Facebook business page Messenger, it says we we same thing that says in our emails we may take 24 to 48 hours to respond same thing you in messaging me on my facebook business page get you nowhere any faster than my email and if they're already a customer they get answered in email i'll copy and paste what they put in messenger and put it in an email because i want things in email um if somebody messages me on my personal page i don't you can't have an auto responder However, I have something that I copy and paste so that I can easily do it from my phone and everywhere that says the same thing. Responses may take 24 to 48 hours. If you want a quicker response, you should email me at. Yeah, so, but you know, if, you, if you're going to do some of your customer service through your Facebook Messenger, please make sure you have a way that you're tracking that because Messenger makes it impossible to track anything. It, so it gets messy fast. Yeah, use Trello, use a spreadsheet, use something just to keep up with who sent you the message, what they were looking for, and who when, do you have to send it to if it's who, somebody in your team. It, that yeah, has to do it. And, yeah, if you have to ask about it, and then when you responded, so that you can, you know, go back and search your messenger and verify that if you need to. But um, I, I literally get like about 150, like on average. And yes, we've averaged this out about 150 Facebook messages a day on my personal page. That's hard to track. It's impossible to track. I'm going to tell you that right now. So if you are somebody who is looking for the instant gratification, remember that Facebook Messenger is hard to track. If I miss a question or a message or something, sorry. I it's going to get better. Everything. You are so much better off sending to email me. because that is easier to track because we will be eventually implementing a help desk system, ticketing system where we can track and make sure everybody is getting taken care of. But that can't. But it, but if you're sending to a Facebook Messenger, you know, odds are you could possibly just not get taken care of. And you can't get mad about that because you're sending it somewhere. One, so, that we're asking you not to. And so two, that it's hard yeah. to track. So set the expectation up with your customers that this is a, not a great thing. So put that in your FAQ, put that in your welcome packet, all of those things. Again, you're setting yourself up for success and the customer up for success. A customer will be less frustrated if they know what to expect from you. Yes, which and all of that can go in your welcome packet. Every last bit of that can go in your welcome packet. When you have your onboarding call, you go over the welcome packet because we all know people aren't going to read it, but they've been sent it. So they have the documentation. So then you go over it with them on a call and then they can't say they did not know. Yes. So that that's the point. So then the next thing is obviously delivery. Like you can't automate delivery, but make sure that you have come up with a really good way Process to deliver, to deliver. So and then document it. And as somebody who has made this mistake of allowing customers to dictate how things get delivered, um, don't make sure that you have a process, you have a procedure for delivery. And if a client wants something else, say, okay, well then well, I guess we aren't going to be the best, best fit. Yeah. Because it will bite you in the butt every time. Yes. Don't. We are still recovering from, we made a lot of mistakes and the, and we like, so when we're talking about all this stuff, these are refreshers for ourselves as well. So just yes. know that we've made the mistake already. So and we know better. And we, we know better. So. And we do know better. So don't do it. So the <laughs> next thing is automating your sales a little bit. Oh, and this comes, with, this, this comes with what you've decided to scale to. So right now, Danielle and I are working on a very small funnel that's going to help automate our sales some. Now, unfortunately, and I don't understand this, but everybody wants to get on the phone for regardless. And we, I don't get that. Um, if you, if it's a subscription and you don't like it, you can just cancel it. You're not locked into a contract, but 
whatever people want the white glove touch. So, but there are some things that you can automate. So like, for instance, doing a sales video of some kind, um, then making sure that you have an email follow-up sequence or your email is sequenced and completely automated. Once somebody, this, this was used to be one of my favorite things to build is somebody would sign up for an email. We'd segment the list and then we would have a specific sales funnel for each segment. So depending on where they were in their business would depend on what product we would pitch to them. And we would pitch it at a quote unquote discount with links that actually locked down using deadline funnel. And that's a really good, great way because then all, all you're doing is just getting people on your list and getting them into the funnel. You just want to get them on the list, get them on the list, get them on the list. And then you just get them in the funnel and it becomes a numbers game. And like, that's a great way to automate passive sales for like an ebook or some whatever e-product you might have, or even a membership. Um, that's a great way to do it. And then let's see what's the other one I wrote down. And then obviously your sales pass. And this is something that Danielle harps on like all the time. So your sales path, you have to have a customer journey for sales. Every single thing in your marketing, your social media, everything has to have a customer journey built into it. And that is your sales path. You can't just launch from just meeting somebody to trying to sell them a $10,000 anything. And, and I don't care about that. Remember, we we did sales. My infamous, infamous, yeah, infamous sales week. Ah, I can't say that word today. Uh, and we talked about how to properly do sales. And that is your sales pass. You have to develop a relationship. You have to have everything set up so that it's super easy for a client to reach you and to know the next step in your sales process and to even know how to buy something from you. Everything should be less than five steps from wherever you're starting. Less than five steps to get somebody to buy from you. So in knowing all about you, they need to know your who, what, where, when, why, and how, and how to get, and, and the how is buying from you. In, in those five steps. Um, so how you do that, you need to have a process with that. What do you share with somebody when they reach out to you and want something from you? Um, that should be actually, you can automate that. I have notes. I'm on Mac. So I have notes and I have a sales folder. And I have, after doing this for so many years, and I've been doing sales for more years than I'll admit because that makes me seem old. Um, I have a response for pretty much every question and I have it all laid out and I copy and paste it. It's very personal. Oh, thank you for reaching out to me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share what we do. Um, and here's what we do. And this is the pricing that we offer it at. So who, what, where, when, why, and how all in one message. And my message is less than 240 characters. Because nobody wants to read anything longer than that, especially in a Facebook message or in an email. Everything's very, and I have right now, I think I counted at one point a few months ago, I have probably 50 or 60 responses for things right now. And I have them organized in that folder. And all I got to do is copy and paste them. And then I wait and see if they've read it. Like I'll come back to it in a few minutes and see if they've read it. Would you like some examples of what we do? And then I tailor those examples to whoever it is and what industry they're in. We've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this a long time. So I have examples in pretty much almost every industry. I had one industry I didn't. And I realized a couple of weeks ago. So I'm trying to find a client in that industry so that I have an example um, of copywriting, of social media posts, of SEO that I've done, all of those. And I have examples and I, in that sales folder. I have the links to all of those kinds of examples so that it's just easy for me to grab. Oh, I have a photographer that wants me. I copy and paste all these examples and give them to him. And then I wait a little while and I probably wait almost 24 hours. Maybe I'll wait half a day, depending on when they answer me and I'll reach back out. Do you have any more questions? Would you like to learn a little more about how we work? And then I have a how we work. I write down the process that we're talking to you about. This is our onboarding process. This is our how you reach out to us. We have a project manager on staff and we have one point of contact. And we are a whole team, but you have one point of contact that you build a relationship with. And this is how you work with our company. You learn to build a relationship with that one person and they really understand everything. And it's their job to make sure everything gets done. 
that's your sales path. All of that is your sales path. And you need that. If you don't have that automated, it takes you forever to bring a client in. And even me doing that right now does take forever some days because people have been scammed and screwed over so many times. Yeah, people have been like that is the, that like that is something that we've definitely noticed. Like it's getting harder and harder to close a sale because people in this particular bubble have been oversold and scammed numerous like in uh, one person it won't be just once that they've been oversold and scammed it will have been numerous times so people there is no trust there and you kind of can't blame them no not at all been so, oversold and scammed so i also provide reviews links to reviews and the reviews have the person's picture next to them that, that they like to my google reviews my facebook reviews i let them go read all of those I very rarely don't have somebody that wants to actually talk to a past client at this point. And I have my clients and I already have permission. I have asked past clients or current clients for permission to use them as referrals and have done so many, many, many times. Um, so you need that's all part of your sales process. Having all of that information already ready and at hand and easy. There's no reason, even even though you're making a true connection and, and connecting with somebody and building a relationship for them, that your sales process, a lot of these things can be automated. I put that in quotation marks because you can't, through a Facebook Messenger conversation, that's a little bit hard to do, but you can have them so you can copy and paste. And once we eventually hire a salesperson, I'll be putting all of this in a Trello board so they already have it all. So that it's easy for them to grab and copy and paste. And they're their scripts. So I made it easier by doing this for myself. One, I made it easier for myself. Two, I made it easier to hire salespeople and scale my business. Yes. So to break it down for you guys, when you're getting ready to scale your business and you need it to, you're going to, before you start scaling your business, you have to kind of overhaul your company to prep it to scale. The places that you need to kind of focus on are your customer service, your marketing, and your sales and delivery. Those are the places where you kind of need to like look and overhaul to get to prepare to scale. Then once you have, but then once you have those in order, because when you're scaling, that means that you're receiving a larger volume of people. So you kind of need to be prepared for that volume mm -hmm. as opposed for waiting for the volume. And then it comes and then you cause a train wreck that was really unnecessary when you could have taken a week or two, if it's have just been you and gotten ready. And I, we have a process for everything around here. So it, it, it does make it super, super, super easy. I highly suggest that you do that because it makes scaling your business so much easier when you have processes, procedures, even when you're just starting out with something new you're doing and you build that first, you're now making it easier to scale and hire somebody else to do that process and procedure. So it, it really is a really great thing to do. So next thing is where to focus marketing, sales, customer experience. That's easy. You have to focus yourself when you're looking to scale your business. You need to, one, focus on your marketing and sales. That's what makes you money. And I'm going to tell you right now, social media is actually, while it's part of your marketing, that is the least thing that you should be focusing on. Social media is poke and hope. You should be looking to social media proof your business in your marketing, your email marketing, your sales messages, again, all that automation I was just talking about, your customer experience, your customer journey on your website, your customer journey should have five steps or less. Remember, keep that in mind. You have less than seven seconds to get somebody's attention. If you can't do it in seven seconds, you're out of luck. And people can read about 130 to 240 words in seven seconds. Yes, there's a lot of science behind that. Believe me, there's a whole lot of science behind that. So knowing that and knowing how to follow through and do all of those things and making sure that customer experience from your marketing to your sales, your customer service, your onboarding, all of that is very streamlined and very easy for somebody to process and get through is awesome. Now, I just said social media is your last thing under your marketing, but it still needs to be there. If it's not there, you're also screwed. 
So you can't ignore social media. And I know that there's a lot of pick a platform and get really good on it. I'm sorry, that is no longer true. You have to be everywhere. You have to be good at it all. If you can't be good at it all, hire somebody for God's sakes. Don't try to DIY it if you're going to halfway do it. And unfortunately, it really is. You can't just be on Facebook and hope that's good enough. However, the caveat here being, where are your customers? You might not have customers on Instagram, which means you don't even have to be there. But if you have customers on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, you better be on all three. Um, almost everybody has customers on Pinterest. Believe me, just go there. It's a search engine. It's the third biggest search engine in the world. Do it. Um, all of those things are super, super important. And you can't half do things anymore. There's very little, you have less room to make mistakes in your marketing and your social media now, um, than you did before. It really takes time and takes effort to invest in your marketing. Marketing can't just be social media anymore because it was for the last five years or so, you could get away with just social media. That is, you are going back to needing traditional marketing, some PR, um, and, and your email marketing needs to be really massive. And you have to be really good at it. And not everybody's good at everything. Like, that's just, that's the big thing. If you're not good at it, hire somebody else to do it. Even if you just hire them for a consultation so you get some guidance on what you should be doing as somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. You don't necessarily need to buy a huge package um, or anything like that. But be be really cognizant of the fact that you need a good marketing experience, a good sales experience, and good customer service. And get somebody to help you if you don't know. That's a huge, huge deal. So we are... Um, for those that are starting out, we actually have a webinar coming next week, and I am going to put a link. Um, we are doing a 10 Tips to Financial Freedom Masterclass next Wednesday. There's two times that you can choose from, and we'll be talking about some of these things and going more in depth. Um, so join us and, and learn a little bit more about getting yourself to the point where you do have financial freedom in your business. A lot of small business owners do not. And we want to help you get there. So have a great day, everybody. Remember to rise, become and be everything you can in your day and in your business, in your personal life. Join us over on the community. We're always happy to talk to you. Have an amazing day and uh, enjoy your Wednesday. I hope it's brighter and sunnier than where I am. It is very dark and rainy today. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. RBB Morning Show, the coach, mentor, marketing, and social media strategist you need each and every morning.